It was a terrific night for the Oklahoma offense and for the Sooner D. Yeah, it was a shitty first quarter, but they adjusted after that as Tech only scored one touchdown in the final three quarters. Good job by the Sooners, 49-27 on homecoming night. Another W for the Crimson and Cream, 7-1 overall and 4-1 in Big 12 play. Not only the Sooners keeping their Big 12 title hopes alive, but also, too, college football playoff hopes are still there. And, you know, we're going to find out where Oklahoma is at nationwide come Tuesday when the first college football playoff poll is really should be interesting. Well, first quarter was interesting. As a matter of fact, if you remember last year's game, the 66-59 to track meet in Lubbock, in which the teams combined for 125 points, believe it or not, when the Sooners um, went up 28-20 to first minute of the second quarter, do you realize at that point that both teams were on pace for about 150 points? And we, we thought for maybe a little bit that the game was going to be heading toward that direction because neither defense really showed up to play. I mean, I mean, not putting a defense on the field or putting your D on the field and getting whipped, I mean, what's the difference? I mean, you're still giving up points either way. Um, you know, talking about the good for the Sooners offensively, uh, that first quarter, they were terrific, and they could have run the ball every play, and I'm not sure Tech would have had you know, much more success in stopping the run. Of course, Tech primarily runs a, a three-man front anyway, uh, but the Sooners, the ground game, that was what the foundation was going to be, um, and they absolutely ran up and down the field on the Red Raiders. Uh, that is when OU decided to run, which in the first quarter, they did predominantly opening series. Rodney Anderson, very effective. Second possession, we saw Abdul Adams. First time we'd seen him in three weeks since the Iowa State game, in which Adams had injured his ankle. But uh, ankle was fine. He was fine. In fact, had a couple of big runs on that second possession. Now, as far as throwing the ball, Baker Mayfield, I thought, had a good night. Not a, not a great night because he did have some misfires, some incompletions, some overthrows. And a lot of those overthrows occurred when he didn't even have pressure on him. So he wasn't at his most accurate, and let's face it, he is the most accurate quarterback in college football. But by his standards, you know, not a great night. But still, though, got the job done. In fact, had a huge run on OU's opening possession. And as far as throwing four touchdown passes, had Mark Andrews wide open uh, throughout that first half and throughout the early part of the third quarter before Texas Tech made the adjustment, which led to the only interception that may fill through all night on that overthrow. Uh, but still a, a very good night uh, for the Heisman Trophy candidate. And I'm going to tell you right now, um, okay, we'll talk a little bit more about this later, the Bedlam game coming up in a week. Uh, Baker Mayfield, if he is a little more accurate next week against Oklahoma State. And obviously, if the Sooners win, um, I, I think it's his Heisman Trophy to lose. I, I really, really believe that. And, you know, for, for Baker, finishing in the top five in the Heisman Trophy ballot, in fact, in the top four of the last two years, uh, wouldn't it be something? The third invite to New York City could be the charm for number six, Baker Mayfield, continuing his decorated career with the Sooners. And by the way, Baker, perfect 3-0 and um, as a starting quarterback against his former team, Texas Tech. So, But offensively, they were able to match Texas Tech. And it's a good thing, too, because in that first quarter, um, and, and let me say this right now, the three-man front for Oklahoma does not work, all right? Unless you're running it on third and long or, or on fourth and long, it does not get the job done. And, you know, Texas Tech, I don't blame them for, for running the ball. In, in that first quarter, because even though Justin Stockton, their starting running back, had the head injury against Iowa State, we didn't see him. You know, Trey King, their backup, who averages, by the way, about five and a half yards a carry. He's no slouch. Texas Tech said, okay, you're going to run three-man front. We're just going to keep running the ball. Yeah, we're a predominant throwing team, but in that first quarter, Trey King, that opening drive, eight touches, and he amassed 46 of the 75 yards that Texas Tech gained on that opening series when they took the uh, 6 nothing lead. Um, they just kept giving it to Trey King. I'm tired of seeing the three-man front. We were told at the beginning of the year this was going to be a change to a four-man front, and for the most part, we have seen a three-man front. It doesn't contain the run, and for the most part, it sure as hell doesn't get pressure on the quarterback, because Shimanek completed his first seven passes of the game. He looked like Tom Brady, for crying out loud. Thankfully, there's a thing called adjustments, and in the second quarter, Mike Stoops said, okay, on first and second down, we're going to run a four-man front. And you know, a couple of things happened. You know, Trey King wasn't getting those big runs, okay? Matter of fact, he was pretty much contained. I think he only had 20 yards rushing 
from the second quarter onward after amassing over 60 yards rushing in the opening quarter. But also, too, um, you know, Shimanek wasn't completing as many passes after that. He completed his first seven, but only completed 15 of his next 31. The four-man front should be the way to go for the Sooners. And if Oklahoma, next week in Stillwater, starts the game with a three-man front, I'm going to take my remote and I'm going to hit the television. And my wife's going to probably kick me out of the house because we're going to have to get a new TV. And believe me, we're not rich people at all. So the Sooners, again, it doesn't mean you have to get rid of the three-man front altogether, but we saw it way too much all the time in that damn first quarter. And the Sooners were getting drove. They were getting beat. And not only that, you know, not only was it not effective against the run, but the pass, um, you know, Shimanek, he was able to get touchdown passes in the first quarter to his three best receivers, Dylan Cantrell, uh, D.D. Cutie, who outraced everybody. And I thought the guy that had the best game for Texas Tech, the former Oklahoma City Millwood product, Cameron Batson. I thought Batson was terrific, had the terrific juggling catch in the game, back had two touchdowns, and he was effective as far as kickoff returns. So I thought Cameron Batson in the losing cause had a terrific game for TTU. But thankfully, the Sooners went primarily to a four-man front from the second quarter onward, held Tech to just one touchdown. And props, to to um, Oboe. He picked up his game in the second quarter, had a sack. And in the third quarter, D.J. Ward. That's right, the former sophomore product was able to get pressure on Shimanek with a couple of sacks um, in that third quarter. So Texas Tech, their offense got held in check from the second quarter onward. Um, as far as OU's offense the rest of the way from quarter two to the end, um, that second quarter, they probably got away from the running game a little bit. All right, um, Look, first quarter it was working. If it ain't broke, don't fix it, keep running. Second quarter they didn't run as much, and they failed to take advantage of those sooner defensive stops. And I, I believe you know Tech... Um, after scoring touchdowns on their first three drives, of the next seven drives after, Tech didn't score on six of them. Sooners didn't really take advantage of that in the second quarter because they didn't run the ball near as frequently. But the third quarter, to open that second half, six play drive for a touchdown, four of those six plays, they ran the ball. Kind of see what I'm getting at? Exactly. If it's working, keep doing it, whether it's Anderson, you know, whether it's Flowers, whether it's Sutton, you know, whoever it is, okay? You know, Rodney Anderson, again, a 100-yard game for him. And, you know, Rodney Anderson, th this is what we were hoping we would see. We didn't get to see it the last two years because of season-ending injuries, and you know, he's turning out to have one heck of a season. Again, good to see Abdul Adams back after the ankle difficulty. So for the Sooners, uh, chalk up another win, and you're going to be taking on Oklahoma State team in a few days that has to feel pretty good about themselves. They were able to overcome the rain in Morgantown, West Virginia, put 50 on the board against the Mountaineers, a terrific game for Mason Rudolph, and also, too, uh, for King and for um, Justice Hill, their, their two primary running backs. They had good games. And the Oklahoma State defense, if you didn't see the game, I know they gave up 39 points, but a lot of those points West Virginia got were in the last 20 minutes of the game. Uh Oklahoma State's defense forced four Will Greer interceptions. We thought Greer would be the big difference maker in Morgantown, but he had a bad game, and the Oklahoma State defense was a big reason why. So expect Oklahoma State's defense to take chances against the Sooners. Expect Baker Mayfield to see blitzes often. Spencer will try to confuse Oklahoma. Again, we'll talk a little bit more about this game on the weekly matchup show coming up soon. Um, it's going to be a heck of a game. It's going to be a heck of a game with the winner remaining very much alive as far as that Big 12 title game getting a leg up. And the loser of the game, um, as far as the college football playoff, forget it. And as far as the Big 12 title game, um, making their chances very slim. So, so much on the line for that 3 o'clock kickoff from Boone Pickett Stadium this Saturday. Um, and, by the way, talked about the college football playoff poll. Wow. It's going to be fun coming up on Tuesday. I expect Ohio State, the team that Oklahoma beat earlier in the year, to be in the top five. I expect Oklahoma, Oklahoma State to be in the top 10. Would be a surprise if they weren't. And if you're a Sooner fan, you need to hope that Ohio State keeps winning. That's the big thing, keep winning, because that win against the Buckeyes, you know, it keeps looking better and better. Ohio State's gotten better and better after that Sooner, um, after the Sooners beat them. You need the Buckeyes to continue to win. Um, now, and one team right now I could tell you on the national scene as we get ready to wrap up the show, Notre Dame. Notre Dame, it, it, at this rate, uh, Maybe Miami beats them, but I think Miami might be a little bit overrated. 
They're undefeated, but has Miami really beaten anybody? Um, that Notre Dame-Miami game coming soon, that's going to be a heck of a game. If Notre Dame wins that, that's another big win on their schedule, and they close out with Stanford. Notre Dame goes 11-1. They're going to screw a conference champion out there of getting into the college football playoff. The name Notre Dame still has power, and I still think the Fighting Irish are going to be a factor in the uh, final playoff poll, which won't be released until early December. As far as the Big 12 goes, man, Iowa State. They're for real. Matt Campbell give him Big 12 Coach of the Year, maybe National Coach of the Year. Here we are entering the final regular season month, and I never thought I would say this, but the Sooners need to keep winning to keep pace with Iowa State. Wow. Matt Campbell has made a heck of a difference. They keep TCU out of the end zone. The only Horn Frog touchdown was on a kickoff return, 14-7. to The Cyclones continue to win, and it's a four-way tie right now in the Big 12. Between TCU losing their first game of the year, Iowa State, Oklahoma, Oklahoma State. Four teams right now with just one loss in Big 12 play. So we're going to be entering a fun stretch in the month of November for the Sooners. They get the win against Texas Tech, but they know that they've got to step up. But they got to cut off those personal foul penalties, too. It's ridiculous. It was a heavy penalized game as far as 15-yarders, and the Sooners have you know, got to watch out for the late hits, the face masks, the... The stupid stuff that, again, continues to be an eyesore. And I say this, you know, because if you don't correct it, it eventually is going to cost you a game. Nick very well could cost you Bedlam. But Bedlam's going to be a lot of fun. Sooners keep their hope alive with the victory by three TDs over Texas Tech. Boomer Sooner.